Welcome to Crappie Hippies at the Bench, an instructional video series on how to tie your own jigs, flies, and create your own fish catching baits. Brought to you by Glasswater Angling for a Better Outdoors, makers of lead free fishing tackle, inventors of Angle King, the Crappie Dueler, and home to hand tied jester jigs, Ring King Paddle Tail Grubs, lead free jig heads, and more. Check us out at glasswaterangling.com and now here's crappie hippie at the bench hello everybody crappie hippie here and i'm excited we're gonna do a really cool lure today it is so darn hot out there i just can't even get myself to go out and do any sort of outdoor chores i'm gonna sit inside and tie some jigs and i'm glad you showed up to tie with me uh, we're gonna make a fantastic little spinner bait and we're going to learn a new skill while we're doing it so let's get started okay so what we're going to do is we're going to make a hackle tail jig with a palmered cheeky boo collar okay uh palmering you already know how to do it if you've made a bugger jig if you made a collared uh, mop jig or a collared regular jig where you wrap the hackle that's all that means it's just it's just easier to say shorter to say than that thing where you wrap hackle round and round. Okay, that's just called palmer, and we can either lay hackle like this, or we can go round and round so all the fibers, you know, stick up. And we're going to do that with a piece of chicky boo. Um, up in the Pacific Northwest, this is a very common technique because for salmon, for steelhead, uh, for fish like that, big fluffy pulsating jigs. Uh, either in natural colors or crazy loud, pinks, purples, golden purple, uh, all these uh, chartreuse, chartreuse and pink, really loud jigs with a lot of tinsel and stuff, re you know, reaction baits, um, especially benefit from having a lot of movement. And when you, instead of laying the, the boo this way, which gives you more of a, uh, when you go around this way with it, it, it flares out and it gives you more, you know, like that. And... Believe it or not, back in the day, a lot of bass jigs were made with palmered marabou uh, for the very same reason, to have it be more like, well, when rubber skirt came along, uh, especially the round silicone or the silly rubber, uh, the round fibers, the, the square rectangular fibers, and we started having those silicone skirts, you know, that's the same sort of action, and it's cheaper and, and quicker to make um, for people to produce and manufacture and works really really well i think they're both awesome bass jigs i got some old marabou ones from the 60s that i kind of just save for design reasons um i'm not a big jig fisher when it comes to bass because a lot of the environments where i fish are just not conducive to that having a plastic with the hook hidden inside it is basically about the only thing you can do because of all the algae and weeds and so forth but where you're fishing on rocks, where you're fishing in a nice lake like Table Rock, where the, where it's nice clear water, uh, not a lot of a lot of goop, um, a good old jig is going to take you a long ways towards catching those largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. But anyway, so that's kind of the story on palmering marabou. Uh, it's a great technique, and it's high time we did a video that involves it. And this is going to be kind of a you know cool looking thing. It's going to have a, a hackle tail little bit of, of chenille on the body and then a big palmered collar up here and then we're going to throw a spinner on it so let me get i'm looking around here's my glasses get my glasses on here so i can see what i'm doing hey there y'all are all right <laughs> and uh we're going to start off with our usual method we're going to take some sallies take some sally hansons all right and we're going to put a little on there the professor has converted me. This is the way. Especially a nice jig like this. It's going to have a lot of steps and and look nice and fancy and cool when I'm done with it. And I don't want things coming apart. So we go down we go back. And we make our thread bed. And we just put a little hitch on there. So nothing comes undone. Nothing comes undone. Okay, so we got that. And we're going to snip this tag end off. We're going to just set it here. I, I forgot my little dish for my scraps, but I'm going to pretend it there and just set them in a pile. <laughs> and we're going to get going on this. Okay, so I love the combination of black and white. It's old school, and it's still around today. It's super effective for a reason. 
Something about black and white lures, uh, they work, they work, they work, they work all the time, they work every time. So what I'm going to do, you know, you can do this with just a couple of hackles, you can do it with three hackles, or you can do it with uh, four, like I'm going to do. So I'm, I've got, them, got these fairly well matched up. I'm not going to worry about reflexing them or, or anything, but I do want them to be about the same length, and I want them to lay nice and straight. And you remember our basic little rule here is that I want that to be about the same length as the jig at least no no longer than that so it's going to be you know or not much longer than that you know there's always these, these rules but it's kind of like you know they're actually guidelines okay what is that that pirate movie where that guy says that and he's absolutely right and of course we're going to save this part because there's all kinds of things we can do with this and if you've watched any of our other videos you know that to be true okay so now I've got my one that I got to length, and I'm not even going to worry about these being a little, you know, bendy and this and that, because if you've done this, you've taken them out, you fished them, you know the stuff will straighten out in the water. So this tackle's a little curled, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that, boom, and I'm going to save it. And now I've got my two black, okay, looking nice and nice and well matched like that. And then I'm going to take my white and I'm going to kind of compare it. And there we go. And so I'm going to comb this out of the way, comb this out of the way. And then I'm going to take and come in here, a little bit of an angle. Boom. And that gives me all this nice material to make these. And I get down here into the fluff and barb and we, we make jigs with that too. And we save that as well. And... There we go. Now I'm going to do my last one. And I'm just going to kind of compare. And always better to cut it if in doubt. Just cut it to slightly longer. Because you can take material off. You really can't put more material back on. So you have to go dig out another hackle. Same story. I've combed it back. Combed it back. Combed this back. Here's the point where I want to cut. So I'm going to comb that hackle out of the way. I'm going to come in here. Kaboom. And I'm going to do that. Now, what I want... What you're going to decide, you want white peeping through with black on the outside, or do you want black peeping through with white on the outside? I'm going to do white on the inside, black on the outside. Well, can't I do black on one side, white on the other side? Yes, indeed. There is no right way to do things. There's just your way to do things. If that's going to get you into a more comfortable and confident situation, then by all means... You want to do it your way. But these are sheer enough that it's just going to be kind of a neat black and white looking thing. We get it done here. And we're going to get this, you know. And, and you say, well, they're not. Okay, so those are not, you know, you want them perfectly, perfectly, perfectly even. You, you can do that. Um, but I am not that fussed about it. What I want is for them to kind of all be laying together on top of each other, one atop the other. But even that is not crucial. Don't go to, you know, tearing what, tearing your hair out, or in my case, what's left of my hair. Oh, my hair is, you know, long, but it it's, it's lacking in numbers, <laughs> so I don't tear on it much. Um, but anyway, so here we go. We've got this nice, nice, well-matched. Now we've got this, we've got this. Okay, and that's going to make a really groovy, cool looking and I'm gonna, uh, uh, tail. And we're going to set this on. We're going to look at it. And it's, it's bending a little bit toward me. But once again, I don't really get fussed about that because the water pressure is going to be even on both sides of that. And it's going to now straighten it out. And so now I, I get it on there. And then I'm going to look. And I can see this one is trying to... I put three or four wraps, and then I'm just letting that that uh, uh, bobbin hang there for a minute. Why? Well, you know, if I have a fixed vise, I'm going to have to get up, look, or I'm going to have to take it out and look at it. But fortunately, I've got one that'll spin. And so now I just take, I'm just going to hold these out straight the way I want them. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to wrap her down. I'm going to wrap her down. Wrap her down. I'm going to start pulling tight. All right. And I got 
my tail on there and as you can see as you can see you know it's can't you know it's curled off and if that bothers you then flip the hackles around so that they they, they point in like this okay my thing is that it's just all they all got laid together like that but like I say I, I'm not gonna get fussed about it because when they get in the water they're gonna straighten out I promise they will straighten out and we're gonna get that on there and that looks great and we're gonna just go ahead and tie that off now Okay, so now we've got a good start on her. She's going to be pretty. She's going to be sexy. She's going to be exactly what we want when we get done. And she's going to be a great bait for big crappie, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, spotted bass, white bass, wiper bass, striper bass, um, and of course all your pike, pickerel, anything with a spinner on it will set those species on fire. We all kind of know that if we've ever had the privilege of fishing for them. But if not, I'm telling you, it's true. Okay, now wait, I don't want to come too far. I want to come back here right about here in the middle. And now I'm going to take some New Age Chenille. This one's I got from uh, Crazy Angler. It's called Salt and Pepper, but you can get it other places. I, no, I'm pretty sure Nimrods also has this. Um, I like Nimrods because his uh, prices are good. His shipping is very reasonable. But Crazy Angler, their shipping's kind of high and all that, but they got great collars and their base price is actually a little cheaper. So you have to make your own decision on which way or how you want to go or what you want to do there. But you can kind of see where I'm going here, okay? Black and white, nice black and white chenille, but it's got a little bit of, the French word for that is estaz. It's got a little sparkle, a little flash, a little glitter, glimmer. And uh, when you have, have flash peeping out of a, fabric like that so as the the person moves in their fancy dress they, and they get this beautiful sparkly well that works out for us fishers too there's a little piece of olive uh marabou fluff stuff stuck on there kind of uh but anyway we're going to that's what we're going to do and we're not going to come we're going to leave ourselves some room here because we're going to palm around a hackle okay and uh so we want to leave a little room we don't need it i mean we can but I find it's easier to palm her in when you don't, um, you're not going over the top of, of chenille. So let's bring this up and then we're going to put this in right here. And we're really going to nail that down. And I'm not going to worry about making a double body, even though I know what I've got here is a 1 8 ounce biz jig, bismuth alloy jig head painted with a gloss black paint from TJ's and uh, uh, with a number two hook I probably uh, if I'm going to fish for especially large mouth and small mouth I'd probably go with a number one hook or even a one odd hook but I also like these for crappie and I just happen to have uh, a number two hook painted up and ready to go this morning so <laughs> that's what I'm going to use all right Okay, so, and you know me, I don't cut, I, 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 you know, I'll show one day, I make these cards, I take a, take the center section out of a 30 rack, and, and it has the right weight to make these cards, because I don't like wrapping out of a plastic bag, and I don't like having a ball rolling around on the floor or anything, I can, I can hitch that in there, it's going to hang there, and then I get the perfect amount of chenille every time, but this, this body's going to be kind of a peekaboo body anyway, because the uh, the palm ring is going to stand up and flow out over the body so tight tight get your before you start wrapping you should get your bobbin up here out of the way which is something I forget to do frequently because I'm very excitable and I like to get going and I want to see it come together because watching a jig come together is like watching a time elapse of a flower opening or I don't know, like watching a slow motion of a whale coming out of the water or something. I like to watch that, ha that, that tie come together and start turning from components into a really nice jig. Okay, so that is that. Okay, you saw I took, you know, one wrap around it, two or three more, pin it down, and make sure that you've pulled down on this while you wrapped it. And then we're going to cut this off. 
Okay, now comes the juicy juicy. And what I'm going to do is palmer on a piece of chicky boo. Now you can use marabou, turkey boo. Um, the thing about chicky boo that I like is that the uh, here's some here's some um, stenciled chicky boo, which I just love. And once again, you can see where I'm going with this pattern. It's not just solid uh, black and white. I'm I'm doing a lot of mix, a lot of broken up uh, type effect. Uh, but the great thing about Chicky Boo and Palmering is that Chicky Boo has a much finer quill in it. And it's also a nice length for an eighth ounce. A lot of your, you're going to have to sort through your Turkey Boo until you find, I mean, it's perfectly fine to get a piece of Turkey Boo with super. This is what they do up, up in the PNW. They, they use Marabou. It's really long, you know, bigger hook, bigger deal. And they'll put two or three pieces sometimes on and just have this fat, you know, big, fluffy, pulsating, um uh jig uh but for us guys here or us folks here excuse me we we're just going to use this chicky boo now i will tell you that this stuff is expensive uh or maybe not to you i don't know it's expensive to me uh, i'm used to paying you know four or five dollars an ounce for unsorted marabou and what like ten twelve dollars an ounce for uh, uh the uh, blood quill uh, this stuff runs $15 an ounce to start and goes up from there. Uh, but if you get it from, I think, Zucker's or the Feather Place or somewhere like that, you can get these for $15 an ounce. And they make such great jigs. And, you know, Chicky Boo is, is lighter weight. It has more barbs on each shaft. So it, as, as you, it, uh, anyway, you can just see in the air. I mean, Marabou is, is, is wonderful and uh, light and and pulsates and breathes and everything else. Well, Chicky Boo extra does that. Okay, now you can tie this on like so, and then you can wrap it. But a lot of guys like to take and take one side off. Okay, so I'm going to come in. And I'm going to take a little bit of material off of there. And I'm going to save that for something else. And then I'm going to come in. And what you want to do when you tie this on. So we can strip some of this out of our way. And you want to tie it on. Like this. Okay. It's got a point. Because we want it to stand up like that. So we've got to be careful to tie it on going across like this. So that, and then we're going to crisscross it. Because we want it to be so it will stand up when we wrap it. And we're going to leave fibers on both sides a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hackle pliers. These are a cheap tool that you really need to have. Uh, Crappie Stopper says I'm cheap. I say I'm thrifty. I don't know. But this is like a $2, $3 tool. Don't pay more than $5 for this. It's a very easy to find, inexpensive tool. And it'll allow you. Now, you want to grip this up in there a ways. And then you want to make sure... That's your hackle. And you can pull with your fingers too. You don't have to just depend on the... But you want to make sure that hackle... See how that's standing up? Okay, you want to make sure that that's what you're getting. And you bring it around a couple of times. Okay. And now you can take your thread and you're going to catch just in front of those hackle pliers and you can go around behind them okay you're going to be in front of them and you're going to go behind them you want to catch the end of those fibers okay but you don't want to drag all your your uh your uh, skirt fiber into here and we're pulling down you don't want to break it but you're going to definitely want to pull down in there I'm going to pull it down, and I'm going to give it a stopper. Okay. 
and then and this is where you know if you're going to do a lot of this once again your uh, west off cheapies are just fine for 99 percent of what you're doing but if you're really you know the thing about cheap scissors they get dull up here in the tips and the tips cross and they spread and they do all kinds of stuff you may want to spill for some nicer scissors also you can use uh cuticle scissors uh, uh, uh salon scissors uh, that uh um they would use in the uh to do people's nails okay and so now we've got this and then we're going to come in and we're going to finish her up with a few wraps i'm pulling all that down so tight and we're going to look at both sides and we really like both sides and then we go like this two three four five and then we pull that down and we feel it pull down and that, like I say, that should be enough, but I'm going to put one, two, three more, just because I like it that way. And now, we're going to come in here with the Sally's, and we're going to really... Okay, so what you can get, instead of doing it with a toothpick, the way I do, is you can get a uh, little squeeze bottle type arrangement. You pour the Sally's in there. And it has like a hypodermic needle uh, type of thing uh, uh, to, to drip the, put the little drops all around on your wrap. So you don't have to fool with this, with this uh, toothpick stuff. But I like stuff I got laying around. I like stuff that doesn't cost money. I like stuff, or much money. But mostly, I like having what I got on hand. And I can... And let's keep and you're gonna lick this you know and, and get this stuff to stay out of your way and then you want to come in here on the bottom and we're gonna get it out of our way down there and here I got the thread clear down here almost to the floor let's get this in here and we're gonna go ahead and Apply uh, some to the bottom because I want a lot on here. I want a lot of uh, Sally's on there because I want those wraps nice and hard. And then we can come in here and, like you say, I always leave like an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, just enough so that it doesn't show so much, but gives a little, you know, a little, a little less chance of that that whole situation backing up. And slipping out from under there. Now, if you want a fuller skirt, use a more dense piece of uh, of uh, uh, chicky boo, or put two on, or put three on. It doesn't matter. But here's what you got now that you're done. Is you got this this nice chicky boo jig that is going to go through the water and have a lot of bulk to it, and give you this nice broken pattern that's very very effective and but if we want to make the spinner bait out of it all we do is we order up spinner shafts all right and you can get these from zeners which is a place in wichita kansas that's where i get mine and they cost they're cheap this is a large i think the largest cost eight cents a piece the smallest cost like five cents a piece and the mediums are in between there somewhere uh, but when you go to even Walmart, you go to buy this type of uh, jig spinner, they want a dollar a piece for them or 80 cents a piece or something like this for them. So I get this for eight cents and I get this blade for six cents. So now I've got 14 cents into it. This is a, this is a, uh, a size zero, a size zero Indiana. And you can maybe go up to a size two. I would not go bigger than that. And one of the reasons I'm using a large shaft on this instead of a medium, which is what I usually use on an eighth ounce number two, is because this Palmer Boo is going to have make a bigger kind of body impression. So I want to make sure that the shaft is going to ride high enough. I don't want it down here getting in the in into it. So I'm going to make it have it be up quite high. So there's plenty of room for that to move. Now, you know. Decide this for yourself, because the closer you can get your blade to your tail material, the more the blade's going to help it, you know, have action. So, I may fish this and decide, well, no, maybe I, you know, could have gone gone uh, a bit smaller. But 
So you take, and then I'm going to use, this is your most expensive component. This is your number 10 barrel swivel. And all I do is slip this on here. Okay. Take myself some pliers. And we want to close this up. Okay, you want it to just barely cross up there, but don't leave a gap because that will try and back off there on you. And when I have it like that, you can see how it's, hopefully you can see how that's just barely crossed over like that. And then we come in with our trusty Zuron pliers, and this is your cheapest component, which is a number one fine stainless steel split ring. Because once again, this is not holding a hook. We don't need a heavy duty or we don't even need a regular. We want something with a lot of memory on it and fine has the best memory. So, and stainless steel is very resistant to corrosion and this bait, you know, you'll lose it or break it off or something like that long before your ring starts to have problems. And then we're going to put it on here do the same thing. You see, I use the Zuron, open that up just a bit and um, um, we're going to slide this on just like that okay and just go until it clicks and the ring closes and there you've got your spinner array and now okay so now when we go to put the the blade on we're going to hold this up this is how it's going to end up like this we open this up on here we open a little what people call the safety pin clip or whatever you want to call it open that up and spread it a little bit give yourself some room and we want to hold it up here like we want it to finish up and then we're going to take that right through there all right right through there like that right on down like that close it back up and there you go now you've got a killer spinner bait that's going to catch you a bunch of fish and it, it's just got action it's got flash it's got a, a fancy tail it's got it all and it's in that great black and white that we all just love uh that's a very dependable dependable fish catching color so there you go that's how you palmer on turkey boo marabou chicky boo any sort of feather you want on there. And of course, you already know if you've done the hackle palmering, you've got the idea already. So you can do it with a chicky boo or, or, or a turkey boo. And I went ahead and made it into a spinner bait, but you don't have to do that. It makes a perfectly great jig uh, without it. And there might be a, a lot of times where you don't want or need the spinner, but why not? Let's have some fun, right? All righty, this has been Crappie Hippie, your tree hugging redneck, saying, hey, Give palmering Chicky Boo a try. Give stenciled Chicky Boo a try. Have a new technique in your jig tying arsenal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tight lines and valentines. Peace out.